Warning, this video contains scenes of graphic violence as well as spoilers for The Last of Us. Now that's out of the way, enjoy the show. <sighs> the Last of Us Part 2! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! I am so hyped for this game that we don't have a release date for at the time of this video and probably won't be coming out until 2019 or 2020. Okay, okay. Well, hey, on the bright side, at least that means that we fans of the series have plenty of time to speculate about what it might be about or what might go on before it gets, you know, totally spoiled for us. So, in that amount of time, uh, let's, let's see what we got here. Let's see, uh, the trailers show... Ooh, all right, yeah, it's been like five years later. Ellie's 19 now. She got herself some ink. All right, learned some music. That's cool. Got herself a new girlfriend. Whoa, 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 wait. Hold on. Go back to that. Go back, go back. Okay, that, um, <laughs> ah, okay, guys, um, that might, that might be bad. Um, all right, I need to ask a very important question in the interest of that young woman's health. Is Ellie infectious? Let's take a look. Now, I am a huge fan of the infected from The Last of Us, because of course I am. Their terrifying take on the real-world cordyceps fungus. Now, in our world, cordyceps prey upon arthropods and insects, often changing their behavior in a bid to propagate and further infect other hosts. One particularly creepy strain is a variety that preys on ants, causing them to act like zombies, climb high above their nests, and then sprouting and releasing spores over hundreds of their sisters and fellow worker ants. This fungus is terrifying! And just like the ant strain, in The Last of Us, infection can occur via inhalation of spores. But the parasite also alters the host's brain, turning them into violent monsters intent on attacking anything that moves. And in true zombie fashion, infection can also be spread via a bite. So now that we know what the infected are and what we're up against, let's take a look at Ellie. Ah, uh, Ellie, you've grown up so much! Made some new friends, let your hair grow out a little bit, and are absolutely dominating these goons! Ellie's a pretty remarkable young woman, but more than that, she is unique in the fact that she alone is immune from turning. The whole first game is set around trying to get her to a doctor to create a vaccine, because... She's immune. Look at this! It's three weeks old! I'm not infected. I was bitten an hour ago, and it's already worse. I've seen her breathe enough spores to take down a dozen men. I can't get infected! Well, that's not entirely true, Ellie. Sure, after you were bitten, you didn't turn into a blood-crazed homicidal maniac, but you are infected. The cordyceps fungus is very much alive and growing in Ellie's system, but for whatever reason, it mutated into a non-lethal and asymptomatic form. In short, just because there isn't a mushroom growing out of her face doesn't mean Ellie is any less infected than a bloater. Which leads back to our question. Ellie's infected, but is she infectious? We only really have one small and honestly inconclusive example of Ellie possibly being able to infect another human being. That example being David the Cannibal. David is the dangerous and duplicitous leader of a group that has turned to cannibalism in order to survive. And if their meat ledger's anything to judge by, they brought in a truly horrifying amount of human flesh. With her head literally being put on the chopping block, Ellie fights back and bites into David's hand. She follows this up with a declaration. I'm infected! Really? So are you. Huh, that kind of reminds me of... I've been bitten, you stupid prince! I'm tainting me. <laughs> it's almost like this is a trope or something. Anyway, in this moment of uncertainty, Ellie confirms her infected status while also claiming that David has been infected by her. But was she right about this? Is a bite from Ellie as infectious as a clicker chomp? Unfortunately, we never get full confirmation from David. Turning takes anywhere from 24 to 48 hours after initial infection. And David only lasts a few hours at most before he, uh... How did you put it, Ellie? Tiny pieces. 
Okay, so David doesn't actually live long enough to turn into a zombie, but we do have a bit of evidence that he may have been starting to turn. First and foremost, following the bite, his sanity rapidly begins to degrade. We know that once infected, the cordyceps fungus begins to grow on the victim's brain. This process destroys higher brain functions, wipes memories, and eventually drives the host homicidally insane. When the player first meets David, he is a calculating man who speaks softly and attempts to use subtle manipulation tactics. Even after multiple reproaches from Ellie, he still tries to get her on his side, even to the point of listening to her when she's on the chopping block. Now, sure, the fact that Ellie had broken his fingers, bitten him, and killed several of his men by the time he had cornered her in the mess hall may have played into his terrifying intent to hunt her down. However, I still can't help but feel that David's getting more and more unhinged as time goes on. True, he may just be getting angrier and angrier at Ellie and showing his true colors, but I think it might be a little bit more than that. Leading into our second bit of evidence, how David hunts. During the mess hall encounter, which is honestly one of the most brilliantly crafted moments in the game, Ellie and David are in a deadly game of cat and mouse, each one trying to sneak up on the other with a blade. During this battle, the player has to be especially careful of where they step, as even small noises, such as stepping on glass or coughing on smoke, could give away Ellie's position to her stalker. Plus, it's pretty dark in there, most of the light coming from the fire in the corner, so it's kind of hard to see. And that's the key. David is hunting by sound, not by sight. Throughout the game, it's made clear that the infected are drawn to noise and have heightened senses of hearing. At later stages, they're entirely dependent on echolocation, as the fungus has grown through their face and destroyed the eye. Sure, David's still very capable of seeing Ellie. There you are, Ellie. <laughs> but more than that, he relies on his ears to track her down just like the infected. Unfortunately, that's about it when it comes to David. He didn't last too long after the bite. So I guess we'll never really know if he would have turned. However, there is one other interesting bit of evidence to point out. There's a moment near the end of the game where Ellie, who cannot swim, nearly drowns. Joel manages to get her out of the water and attempts chest compressions to revive her. Now in medical CPR such as this, it is common practice to perform mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation alongside chest compressions in order to revive the victim of the drowning. However, in the entire sequence, Joel never puts his mouth on hers to try and breathe for her. And it's not because he wouldn't try anything he could to save her. He's held up at gunpoint while trying to help her and doesn't stop until one of the riflemen knocks him out. Now, if Joel was so determined to save Ellie that he ignored a gun in his face, why wouldn't he try mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation? Because Joel knows he can't. Because it's not just the spores in the air that spread the infection. It's also spores in the host's body fluids. Notes in the game talk about infected blood cultures growing fungus and spores in the cerebral spinal fluid. And that's why when an infected bites a human, the fungus gets in their system because saliva is a vector for infection. And all that brings us back to this kiss with this girl in this scene. And oh man, am I worried. He should be terrified. Oh, you don't know how right you are. Because I already had to live through Ellie losing her first girlfriend, and I don't know if my heart can take that kind of trauma again. Well, here's hoping that Ellie's capable of passing on her mutated strain that doesn't drive you crazy. Hey, maybe that will actually be how they save the world. Ellie just goes around giving blood transfusions and kissing cute girls. Let me dream, all right? Ellie deserves a happy ending. Until more information about the game is released, this is all speculation. But man, if it hasn't gotten me excited to jump back in the world of The Last of Us. If you made it this far through the video, I hope you had fun. And hey, thanks for watching. Is everything you were hoping for? That's all for now. And until next time, remember to always cook your meat thoroughly before you eat it. For calm the hell down, we cooked him. David me! Bye.